Well, a lot of questions come to, come, right. come to mind. Uh, one of them is, uh, you've talked about the possibility of running for the Senate, but now there's also that possibility that Jeff Sessions may want to run again and get his seat back. Is, is that a possibility in your mind as well? Well, it's too early to say whether it's a possibility, but it doesn't affect what I'm doing, going around the state talking to people about whether we should run in 2020. Uh, Attorney General Sessions and I have known one another for almost 40 years. So at some point, I assume he and I will have a discussion, but I'm going to continue on with my efforts. Mm -hmm. If uh, Jeff Sessions comes back and decides he wants that, his old seat in 2020 and says, you know, Bradley, I'm I'm thinking about running. Would, would you step step aside and say, yeah, I'll stay with my house? Or? I think at this point in time, I'd rather not speculate. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'd like to have whatever discussion I need to have with the Attorney General. He and I have been friends for a long time, and I honor the work that he did down here as our U.S. Attorney. He was a terrific U.S. Attorney, a great Attorney General for the state of Alabama, and I really enjoyed having him in the United States Senate representing our state. So let's wait and see what's going to happen with him. He's got some important decisions to make about his life and his career. He's got a great family, and uh, I know he needs to be thinking about his family at this time. And so let's give our hopes and prayers to them as they go forward in the future. How, how, do, you, how do you feel about the way this all played out the day after midterms and, 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 and he sends this letter uh, of resignation to the, to the president? There's some speculation that maybe the president asked for him to resign. How do, you, how do you feel about how it all how it all played out so soon after the, the election? Well, I think we all knew this was coming, and I'm, I'm glad it happened after the election and not before the election. So the timing doesn't bother me at all. I mean, obviously, very soon here we were going to have this decision come down. So the president needs to go out and find a good person to take his place, somebody who will fulfill the agenda that the president ran on. I feel confident he'll find the right person, and that person will be confirmed by the United States Senate. What did Jeff Sessions do wrong as Attorney General? Well, in the, in the mind of the President, he should not have recused himself from the Russia investigation. Now, the Attorney General said that he had to under their internal rules. I don't know their internal rules. But if you ask the President, it was uh, recusing himself from the Russian investigation. How about, what, how about Bradley Byrne? What does he think? What did Jeff Sessions do wrong, if anything, as Attorney General? Well, I don't know the rules of, of, of the Justice Department when it comes to recusal, so I can't comment on that because I don't know about it. But the other work he was doing, I think he was doing exactly what the President expected him to do, and he was doing it very well, as Jeff always does his job when he undertakes it. So, but the President gets to pick who he wants to be in his cabinet. And we should all honor that. And whoever the president is, we should honor that. This president wanted somebody else to be his attorney general. He's going to get that opportunity to appoint somebody. I feel confident we'll get somebody good who will continue to do the good job we need him to do. What's Jeff? I mean, just, just like, like, like you said, you're, you're, you're good friends with Jeff Sessions. Yeah. And, and, and Jeff is also an avid supporter of the president throughout the campaign, yep. and even to this day probably. But, but couldn't he have had that one-on-one -on -one conversation with the president and said, hey, let's, let's work this out type thing? That, well, I don't know that he didn't. So I can't tell you that the, what discussions they had privately or did not. You'd have to ask the Attorney General about that. But I've known Jeff Sessions, as I say, for almost 40 years. He is the epitome of a stand-up guy. You know, he does what he says he's going to do. He follows through on the things he says he's going to follow through on. And so they may have had a conversation that I'm not privy to, so you might want to ask him about that. Mm -hmm. What is Jeff Sessions' legacy as Attorney General in your estimation? I think he returned the Justice Department to being the enforcers of the law instead of being someone that's out there trying to make new law. Um, I want the laws of the United States to be enforced and be enforced professionally. And I think he uh, is returning or has returned the, uh, the Justice Department to that level of professionalism where they're focused on enforcing the law and not all that other stuff. Congressman, you said that if Jeff Sessions decides to run for his old Senate seat, it wouldn't change your plans. Why is that? Well, it doesn't change my plans to continue to go out there and talk to people around the state. I think, as put so much time in this, I think I need to keep going. And uh, I've received an enormous amount of encouragement. And if for no other reason, I owe it to the people who have been so encouraging to continue to do what I'm doing. And, and we've got a lot more ground to cover in my effort. But I can tell you, yesterday was an amazing boost to our effort. And we've received a large number of phone calls, text messages, and emails today uh, in going beyond encouragement, expecting me to run for Senate. And so I'm going to keep going, and I think that's what I should do. I think Jeff Sessions will want me to do that. 
Any idea on what impact this will have on the special counsel going forward? I don't have any idea about it. I've seen absolutely nothing in what we know about what Mr. Mueller's been doing that he's developed anything close to being a case on the president or people around the president. As a member of Congress, does it concern you that, that so many people in the president's cabinet just keep coming and going? I mean, it's, it's the, this revolving door. That kinda, it it kind of looks like that when you look from the outside in. Well, as I say, it's up to the president for him to pick who he has around him, and uh, that's really not my business. I'm really more focused on the f substance of what they're doing, and my relationship, my office's relationship with the White House and with the people he's appointed to these departments and agencies has been superb. Anytime we call over there, we get our phone calls returned. They try to do whatever they can to help us. It's been great. So um, the president can have whoever he wants to around him. As long as they keep doing that, I'm going to be happy. Is there anyone you'd like to see appointed to that position? To, to the Attorney General's yeah. position? Uh, I don't really have a name in my head. A lot of people have talked about Senator Lindsey Graham. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think Senator Graham showed incredible uh, presence during the Kavanaugh hearings, and I know a lot of people feel like he would be good in that position. But it's the President's decision. There are a lot of very fine lawyers at that level around the country, and I think he should pick the one that he's the most comfortable with. And I feel confident that the Senate will confirm whoever that is. Do you think that person will set out immediately to squelch the Mueller investigation? I would hope that person would bring Mr. Mueller in and say, tell me what your end game is here. Because this has been going on a long time. You, you either have a case at this point or you don't. And if you do have a case, put it on the table for all of us to see. think they were holding it till after the midterms? I, well, there's speculation about that. I don't know. But I know it's time to wrap it up. I mean, it's been going on too long. There's all this speculation. It's not getting us anywhere. If he's got a case, make the case. If he doesn't have the case, it's time to fold it up and quit. With the uh, Democrats in control of the House, would it surprise you, depending on what the Mueller investigation uh, determines, that we have impeachment in the next two years? Oh, I fully expect that they'll do that. Yeah, no, I, I think that the Democrats will have all sorts of their own investigations about the same thing. They'll plow the same ground over and over again. Uh, they'll bring it up for a vote for impeachment. They probably have the votes to do that. It has no chance of succeeding in the Senate. It's a total waste of time for everybody. Uh, but the Democrats have a pretty strong base telling them, we want you to go after the president. I think they're going to go after the president. I think the people of America are not going to like that. Um, Bradley, when do you really have to make a decision on whether or not you're going to run in 2020? I've heard from folks are saying by the spring, you really got to be, for a Senate race, going to have your name out there campaigning. Um, so well, my name's out there right now. Right. <laughs> Officially, I mean. Officially. Um, well, we haven't settled on a precise date for that. Uh, because the primary in 2020 is the first Tuesday in March, presidential year, qualifying will probably be this time next year. So you've got to get out enough in front of that qualifying so that you've built your ground game up uh, before you qualify. So that would mean sometime next spring or summer. But I can't give you anything more specific than that. How do you, how do you work uh, kind of transitioning into the, the, the Democratic gains in the House? Mm -hmm. how, do you, how, do you, how are you going to go about working with, uh, with your new colleagues? I'm going to do what I've been doing since I've been there. Uh, I work with Democrats on a lot of things. Uh, I'm the co-chair of the HBCU, the Historically Black College and University Caucus, uh, with Ms. Alma Adams from North Carolina. I'm the co-chair of the Singapore Caucus because of ST Arab Space with Denny Heck from Washington. Uh, we have a very bipartisan working relationship with everybody on the House Armed Services Committee. I co-sponsor bills with Democrats. Where I agree with Democrats, I work with them. I've always done that. But there are going to be points of disagreement where we won't be working together. And I think the Democrats in the House that know me know that I'm going to be that kind of person. Where I agree with them, I'll work with them. Where I don't agree with them, I'm going to be a pretty fierce adversary. And, and they know to expect that. Nancy Pelosi's a very kind of polarizing figure. Do you think it's a good idea for her to be the speaker or, or someone else? I will not be voting for Nancy Pelosi for Speaker. I don't know what the Democrats in their, within their conference are going to do about that. Um, it looks like it's heading in the direction for her to get their support and therefore get to be the Speaker. Uh, and if that's their decision, that's their decision. Uh, we need to make sure we Republicans uh, understand our role. And our role is to be the loyal opposition, loyal to the United States of America, 
but opposing the other party where we have principal differences with them. And there are some very significant principal differences between the Democrats and the Republicans. But I don't think we should look for ways to pick fights with the Democrats. I think there'll be plenty of opportunities for us to have differences where we can work together for the good of the people of the United States, we should do it. Now, Ms. Pelosi and I have a very big difference of opinion about just basic policy for the country. And I don't mean that in any disrespect to her. She and I just have major differences. And it would be my expectation that there will be a number of times where I will be in opposition to what she's trying to do. But as I said earlier, if there are ways that we can work together, for example, I'll give you a good example. The President had Ms. Pelosi, uh, Speaker Ryan, uh, the leaders of both parties in the Senate, into the White House September a year ago. And they all agreed on the four pillars of immigration reform. I'm disappointed we haven't gone forward with that. We should have been able to do that. Now, if she can work with the president and move that process forward, of course I'm going to work with that. But if she just comes out with a democratic version of that, that doesn't have real border security, that doesn't build the wall, then I'm going to have big differences with her. And, and, and I am anticipating that we're going to have that sort of fight. Uh, Bradley, I want to ask you real quick, back to Jeff Sessions. Yeah. Uh, you know, there have been a lot of uh, Republican, um, you know, it's been difficult for Republicans in this state where you have a popul popular president in Alabama and you have a popular uh, former senator right. as the attorney general both going at it. Has it put you all in kind of an uncomfortable position as far as how, trying to address this question of Trump or Sessions? <laughs> well, I don't choose Trump or Sessions. Right. I, choose, I choose Trump and Sessions. Uh, our President Trump has got a great relationship with the state of Alabama. He's very popular. Uh, the substantive positions that he's taken as president has certainly been very well supported in the state. Just look at the results from yesterday's election in Alabama. Uh, but those of us who've known Jeff Sessions for a long time, I mean, we're loyal people. We don't turn our back on friends because there's a difference between them and, and a very popular president. So none of us are going to do that, and I don't think the president or the people around him expect that. But the president, I think, does expect those of us who are Republicans to be loyal, and we are going to be loyal. He's going to pick a new person, and I'm going to fully support who we could do. One more question. Is he ex expected in the Mobile? I mean, he hasn't been around Mobile, I guess, all that much, obviously, because he's been busy. But are you expecting him to come back um, home, I suppose? And were you willing to meet with him down here? or uh, The Attorney General? Yeah. Oh, I hope he'll come home. I would expect, expect he would. I, don't, I mean, I don't know if he come back permanently, but sure, I would expect him to be back here for some. He's got many, many friends down here. Uh, but I'm happy to talk or meet with Jeff Sessions anytime, anywhere he would like to do that. He is, as I say, a very longtime friend of mine, as he is many people. And we've always had a good, positive good working relationship, and I would anticipate we would continue to do Have that. Have you reached out to him yet? Yeah, to not today. Okay. Not today. I, the last time I talked to Attorney General was a couple of months ago. We had a terrific meeting in his office, caught up on a lot of things, um, and um, I would anticipate sometime over the next few weeks, several weeks, he and I will sit down and have a talk. Okay. Thank you very much. Y'all got it? Yeah.